Yeah, we're live. And I'm like nine minutes early, so we're getting a little bit of an early start. Maybe that way we have more time to talk tech. Tonight we're going to talk about a couple of things. One, the thumbnail that I put up is a photo of what, what might be one of my favorite uh, EFI style intake manifolds for a small block Chevy. And that is the Holly High Ram. Way back when I did all of the tune port stuff, I did a test the, where we ran all the different tune port style intake manifolds for the small block Chevys for the L98 stuff. And one of them that I ran was this Holly High Ram. But actually, I like this design even before that because way back when I was doing five liter Fords, there was an intake manifold. I don't know if you guys remember it or, or are familiar with it. It was made by a company called Flowmaster. And no, I don't think it's the same Flowmaster that does the does the exhaust or did all of the two chamber and three chamber mufflers that all of the Mustangs are running around with. It was another company, but basically what it was, was it was the Ford version of this YN tunnel Ram intake manifold, which basically is what the stealth Ram is. For those of you not familiar, the stealth Ram for the small block Chevy is basically a YN tunnel Ram converted for port fuel injection. But then instead of the, the, the upper portion, that they have that has uh, the top port part that bolts two carburetors on top of there. They have um, basically a big rectangular box with a front opening with two holes for the throttle body. In our case, we ran a dual, you know, tune port style, uh, dual blade, 58 millimeter throttle body on it. But, but really you could put any sort of box on there that you want. And that's what we're going to talk about. That's one of the modifications that I would make, but they made this, they essentially converted a tunnel ram style intake manifold into a, if you will, a tune port style manifold. And it works pretty well. It, in fact, it, it did, you saw in the video that I put up today, we compared it to a dual plane intake manifold. In this case, it was a fairly mild small block and we ran it compared to an Edelbrock Performer intake manifold. And I've run it compared to others before. And then in that video that I have up, with the tune port stuff, we ran it against um, all of the other regular tune port manifolds and then a lot of other things as well. So I have all of that data. So we know how it compares and it actually does fairly well. I like it because for the same reason that I liked the Ford version way back then is that way back then that Flowmaster tunnel ram style intake manifold with a side mounted throttle body was probably the most powerful intake manifold that you could get for a five liter back in the day. It was better than the box manifolds on the GT40s or on the factory uh, five liter HOs. It was, be you know, it was better than most of the stuff that was available back then. A after a while, we got a lot more stuff available, but that particular one um, worked very well be because it had the right combination of, you know, of runner length and flow and all that, and was a big change over from then the factory HO. And the same reason, this is the same reason that I like this small block Chevy version is because it offers a lot of performance potential. And I like that its application lends itself as an EFI combination to forced induction, because obviously that's what I'm always thinking of. <laughs> okay, that looks nice, but now it needs boost. And the one thing that I don't like about it is, and, and this is, I think this is kind of true of all of the tune port stuff is I'm not a big fan of the oval throttle body. We have to elongate the, um, the silicone couplers that we have. And, and so you're almost always going to have some kind of reducer um, or something that changes this, this oval shape to the round shape. So I'm not, a, I'm actually not a big fan of it. So if I was to, and, and we've done it and it works fairly well, we've blown through this kind of intake manifold. I ran a, a turbo through this and we've ran blowers through them and, and they all work. But I, what I would rather do, and one of the modifications I would like to make to one of these, um, the Stealth Ram intake manifolds, and I haven't done it yet, is that you'll notice that it's it's a two-piece manifold. So you have the lower section that has the the runners, and they all meet up in a in a flat plane basically, and that allows you to bolt the box on. And the box is just a box. It's a box with two hole openings in the front for the throttle body to flow through. And then there's no runners or anything or anything inside the box. There's basically just radius edges that are cast into the design of the box. Um, what I would like to do is make a better, bigger box so that I could put basically adjustable runners inside there. I'd like to put tubes 
a flange that are these tubes are connected to. And then you could crisscross them, you know, depending on how you could make the box quite a bit wider than that one is, because that one's only about as wide as the, you know, it kind of fits inside where the fuel rails are. But since you're above that anyway, a lot like the SLP manifold or the Lingenfelter box ram or those things, you can go outside that. So I would make the box quite a bit bigger, you know, and then I would, that would allow me to make different runner lengths in there. At the very least, put radius, better radius entries on there and stuff. And so you could do a lot of cool things and play with the, that design. The other thing that changing the design of the box itself would do is I would put like a, you know, a single throttle blade on there. I would put a 90 or one or 102 millimeter throttle body. And if you wanted to get really clever, you could do some cool stuff and put two of them on top or two 4150s on there. You know, you if you were going to do it right, you'd make it, not only would you make it so that you could remove the lid and make the runners adjustable, but you'd also do it so you could, like, like Holly does, you could make the lid convertible. So you could put a tri-power on there if you wanted to do that. You could put two carburetors on there. Although the carburetors would be interesting. I'd like to see how well that works. But certainly two 4150 four-hole throttle bodies, two two-barrels, whatever. You know what? The sky's the limit on what you could put in there. You could put two of the um, single blade, like two 102 millimeter throttle bodies, like LS throttle bodies on there. Um, I probably would just put one in the front and call it a day. That way I could just blow through it. You know, if you wanted to, you put throttle bodies all the way around it and have like six or eight of them, whatever. <laughs> so, so you have an unrestricted flow. The other thing that you could do is you could go to wide open throttle like we have before and then just pull the lid off. And then all of a sudden it becomes kind of an IR manifold and you could do all of that stuff. And those are the things that I like to do on the dyno. And so when I see a manifold like this Stealth Ram, which like I said, which I've used a, a number of times, um, I like the design and I, I like how well it works. But those are some things that I would kind of like to play with later on. And the other thing I would do is probably port the lower section as well, too. It might be a good, I know that you could go in and reach most of that with conventional porting, but it, I, it, I might like to send it to the guys at, at Extrudone and have them work it over and, and get it to flow even more. And then obviously you'd match it to whatever cylinder heads you have. Cause I don't, I don't remember now what size the port is. Um, I don't remember if it's a, an 05 or an 06 gasket. I think that those are the Chevy ones. It's been a while since I ran a small white Chevy. Can't remember. Um, I know the Ford ones really well <laughs> because I've, I've run a lot of those and kind of memorized those. Um, but on the on the Chevys, I don't, I can't remember what size it is. So you might want to you know port match that if you have a bigger airflow research head or trick flow head or that kind of thing. But um, I I like that uh, I, I like that Stealth Ram and it when we did comparison tests with it, you can see in the video that it made more power at the top but lost a little bit down low compared to the dual plane. Which as we saw in the previous test before I did this. The dual plane works really well down at the lower engine speeds, no matter which camshaft you have in it, it works really, really well. And we saw that when we ran the, we ran multiple camshafts um, in this small block and that, you know, that worked good. That was also an interesting test in the video that I posted today. And it, and it goes to show you that even with like with the EFI manifold with that stealth ram, that if you change the camshaft, you can change the character of the motor. Even if the heads and the intake and the displacement and the compression, all this stuff is the same, you can you can effectively change the character of the motor just with the camshaft. So when we had that small 250 cam in there, you know, it's like an RV cam to a 6212 kind of cam. And then we put, and we didn't step up a lot. We It's about two steps only. So it's like a 218, 224. But the XFI cam had a wider LSA. And it also had um, a, a good bit more lift. And so those changes combined to make this thing, you know, it has more duration and it has a wider LSA. So that th those tend to push the thing, tend to push power production out farther, which it did. And we made a lot more power with the bigger camshaft. But that motor becomes effectively a different motor with that camshaft than it was with this little, you know, RV style camshaft, even though we kept the same intake manifold. So... And the, the other thing that's interesting, and I, I should point out that on the throttle body that we use on the Stealth Ram, I think that that one had, um, at least one of the throttle bodies did, one of them had a bolt-on front section that has the lip on it. So if you need to attach, um, you know, an, an air inlet or for our, in our case of, of 
silicone coupler with a so that we can blow through it. Um, you, you you might have to do that as well. I can't remember. I know it was a 58 millimeter, but it might have been a TPIS one. Um, I, I don't really remember. Um, but that that uh, that stealth ram when I did the tune part test was one of the few intake manifolds that did as well as because we I think I think I in that one I think I ran an RPM or an RPM air gap when we were comparing it. I remember doing the test between the TPI manifold and the dual plane. And the dual plane was like 30 or 40 horsepower better and didn't seem to lose a ton um, down low either. So it did fairly well. So I thought, well, you know, if I was going to do one, if I was going to do a small block, I don't know that I would do a tune port unless I wanted to stay, stay specific to that particular Corvette. Or maybe if I was doing a truck, <laughs> then, then I would definitely want the tune port. But then when we ran the stealth ram, I'm like, oh, okay, that's that seems to be, uh, you know, as good or better than the dual plane was. Um, and, and still it's an EFI one. So if a guy wanted to keep an EFI combination on there and he had it in a, I'm not sure if that would fit under the hood of a Corvette or not, but if you wanted to keep it EFI, that's obviously a, a good option. So let's see what you guys are doing tonight. Um, uh, so we talked about how I modified it. Yeah, I think we went over all the stuff on the, on the manifold stuff. I've got some other cool testing coming up. I'm hoping to get down to um, West Tech and do some more testing. And so we'll have to see how the dyno schedule looks. But, uh, we'll, you know, we'll, I really will only know when I get there. Um, so let's see what you guys got going on. Okay, greatest hits, 317 stock heads on LS1. What are the gains? Also, do I have cam springs, et cetera, mods on my Firebird? If you put 317 heads on your LS1 in place of your LS1 heads, you're going to make less power. Uh, Alice, it didn't, I didn't think it fit a stock Corvette hood. As we're talking about clutches. The Excel Super Ram. I, yeah, I tested that in the tune port test. So what's today's poll going to be? Yeah, I'm having to come up with another poll for today, right? I really want to put a supercharged 3800 in a CJ5. I really like those motors. Isn't Pomona this weekend? Is that the, that's not, is that, that's not Winter Nationals, right? Uh, greatest hits. Yeah, the 317 is kind of low man on the factory head totem pole if they're all stock. I mean, there's nothing wrong with any of the factory heads. They'll all work. And especially if you're going to add boost, just put on, just close your eyes and put on whatever head you have and then just run boost and you'll be happy. But because the chamber is so big and not very well designed, the 317 head kind of lacks power um, from the big drop in compression uh, compared to the other heads. But if you put 799s or 243s, especially if you mill them a little bit, they should work really well on the, on the LS1. Doing a big, doing big comp 4x4 small block Chevy cam with a start RPM of 1800. So it's I was looking at intake, seeing the sniper tunnel ram single carb was 1800 start. D don't go by what they're telling you because of um, the tunnel ram is not really going to be making great power at 1800 RPM. And I don't know how big your comp cam is, but again, <laughs> I had somebody, and the reason I'm telling you this is because I had somebody tell me, yeah, this camshaft, this solid roller, like 230 camshaft, says that it'll work at 1800 rpm i said well it'll the motor will be spinning at 1800 rpm but that cam's not going to be making good power at 1800 rpm it's just too big so you have to tell us what the specs are randy and we could tell you give you a good idea on the camshaft 
what would you say is the best combo for a stroker 347? You got to tell me what you're trying to do with it, what kind of power you're trying to make. There's lots of different 347 combinations everywhere from I've run a 347 with a stock head and a stock cam. And I'm thinking that I even ran the factory stock HO intake manifold, the upper lower intake manifold. So that's not an ideal combination. But if a guy just wants more torque, that's exactly what it does. Uh, I've had very good results, 65. Uh, I've, very, I've had very good results with an intake that is smaller in port dimensions than the head. So I, I've seen that anti-reversion. <laughs> I, I don't I think that the reversion thing is not what you what you really think it is. You you have reflected waves that go back and forth and you don't really want to stop those. Are Speed Pro Hyper Eutectic pistons okay to use with boost? Um that would be my last choice, but if you have the if you keep detonation out of the mix, um and you have enough ring gap and you have the right piston to wall clearance, they will definitely work. Uh, Vans, I'll give you my email address. Uh, there we go. It's up. I'm ready to buy a Saturn Sky Pontiac Solstice five speed manual trans for a custom 5.3 swap. Will that trans hold up to that? How does the air gap compare to the original performer? I think I have, um, I only have performer versus air gap on a Ford. I don't think I've tested that on a Chevy. <laughs> Should I increase the gap on my air gap? Yeah. Then take it to Gapplebee's, air Gapplebee's. Uh, guys are talking about T5 trans. I ran the T5 trans that came in my 88 Mustang. We ran it for, I don't know, I ran it for a few seasons in showroom stock racing. I ran it behind my modified NA motor that was a trick flow headed um, 274 cammed. Uh, I ran it in the Silver State race. I put that trans in our World Challenge car. I had it in my car behind the Vortec Mustang and it lasted forever <laughs> um so and and the vortex motor had to be making more than 500 horsepower I, I think it was about 430 or 440 at the wheels the way that we were racing it um so the trans isn't the transmission isn't rated in power i know that they do that but it's rated in how you drive it Uh, I ain't no punks in the house. Chat room. <laughs> you can. You can ring gap the competition. Let's see. For a 347, I was thinking about a daily driver. I'd like to see the video you put together about a daily nice 302 making good power with a small cam, bigger heads. You, you'll be really happy with a 347 and that 274 cam and any kind of good head like a trick flow or a... And I have lots of 347 videos up. I think we use bigger cams than that, but that 274 cam and a 347 is an even better cam in that combination because it's even milder than it is in a 302. And, um, you know, if you use a dual plane intake manifold, if it's going to be carbureted or like a an RPM2 or a Holly Systemax uh, or, or any of the trick flow EFI ones, if you want to use those.
Uh, salty, I hand ported a TPI intake. We've done extrude honing on a lot of the stuff. Um, we've done fully ported lowers and even, even the big mouth ones. We've done those and then the big tubes and stuff. But the thing is, it, the runner length is going to kind of dictate where the thing is making effective power. So even if you put lots of camshaft in it, a tune port motor is never going to be a high RPM deal. Uh, Dan, which carb spacer makes the most power? Actually, the question you should be asking is which throttle body spacer makes the most power? In fact, I think that that's going to be our that's going to be our poll for tonight. <laughs> So the question is, do throttle body spacers actually make any power? So you know what I'm talking about, a throttle body, um, whether you, and you can, you can extrapolate this if you like, like a throttle body, like even the, um, the throttle bodies that inject fuel, like a TBI set up on, on the Chevys and Ford had them too. Um, either that or the throttle bodies that are mounted in like an LS throttle body. That's just a throttle body that just flows air that's mounted to a, you know, in the LS, for instance, a composite intake manifold or like the Kager manifold that I have, that throttle body. Do throttle body spacers, a spacer basically between the throttle body and the intake manifold, do throttle body spacers actually make any power? Do they, I'm not even going to say make, I'm going to say add. Do they add any power boom and the poll is up so let's hear what you guys have to say i actually want to do some testing on, on things like that like the tornado and the and throttle body spacers and, and things like that because um i'm a i'm a wondering got 13 votes in come on guys you got 106 people here get it get out there and vote rock the vote michael in a 390 inch 350 horsepower motor would a two gt35 spool it faster or slower than a single gt45 yeah, um two gt35 82s are going to be slower than a single gt45 so uh 600 to 650 horsepower i would go with a single gt45 on that application because you're you're nearly twice that level with two gt35 82s so they're going to be slower Uh, Mike, use a tune port manifold, but make elbow in place of the throttle body and have a base to install a carb on top of the elbow. It would be wild having a carb sticking out of the hood. Uh, I didn't do that. What I did was welded an aluminum four hole spacer, cut a hole and welded aluminum four hole spacer to the top of the plenum of the tune port manifold and then ran a carburetor on that. And we just, we just capped the front of it. So we ran a carburetor on top of it. It didn't work very well. <laughs> Randy, a comp 4x4 cam 226, 234 at 50, 480, 490, 498. 111 running Pro Max 183 heads. So that's a pretty good size cam. Um, that's not going to be a torque cam. Yeah, Tyler, de definitely nitrous spacers work pretty well. <laughs> if you inject nitrous through your spacer, that actually adds power quite a bit. Uh, how's the turbo challenge coming? I only have a few guys that are interested in it, but I have, I'll still have like, you know, I don't know, seven or eight turbos. Richard, any thoughts on small Chevy flow tech heads? I've actually never tested those. And I've never tested skip whites or any of those. Um, I, I, I would imagine they have to be as good or better than stock heads, right? Has anybody ever tested, like done an actual back-to-back -back test on some of these low dollar small block Chevy heads. Puppet Master Blaster. Pup, that's, an, that's an awful lot going on there. Six liter LQ4 PRC 225 heads, fast 102, good. Scat forge rods, Wisco pistons, stock crank, drag car, trying to decide if a comp LSR 231, 239. 
that camshaft, the 231 camshaft is definitely going to make more power than a sloppy stage two will by, by a pretty good bit. Look at the video that I have up. I ran the, that's a 259 cam. I ran a 269 cam, which is a 231, 247. And it just makes a little bit more at the very top. They make the same peak torque and, and for 99% of the curve, they're the same. Um, but the wider LSA uh, or the wider, uh, or, or the, the increase in exhaust duration made just a little bit more at the top and a little bit less down at the bottom. But those 231 cams will definitely make more power than a, um, than a 228, which is the sloppy stage two cam. Uh, Engine Master showed that they added power. Uh, they added power on a fuel injected combination or they added power on a carb spacer. I bought some greatest hits, so I bought some LS7 lifters and trays for my LS1, and I'm wondering if I can reuse my 7.4 push rods from TSP. They're chrome only, along with my LSA Torker V2 cam. Uh, I don't know how... I need to ask Brian that, what the difference is between um, an LS7 lifter and a run-of-the-mill stock wrecking yard lifter. I don't... I need to measure that and see... Um, that would be good information for me to get so that people have that. I don't know what the difference is. You just put them in there and see how many turns you have before, how, how much preload you have. Uh, I never hear you talk about push rod length when you change the cam. I have six liter and a BTR stage three cam. Well, I need different push rods. Probably not. We normally don't when we do cam swaps because we're still within the range of, of, of adjustability, basically, of the lifter. Because you can run um, what the way that I look at it is the number of turns of preload. So if we have anywhere from a quarter to a half turn of preload, so that there is some preload, so there's not lash, and then you can go all the way to like a turn and a half and eh, maybe it'll just a little bit more. So you have a big range in there of a push rod that will actually work whether that's optimized or not is a, is a whole nother discussion. You can take a look at the test that I did on push rod length and you could kind of see which way that you would rather go. But all of the different push rod lengths that are within that adjustability range will work. So you have a lot of wiggle room for the change in base circle of the camshaft. And usually the change in base circle of a camshaft from a factory one is not that great. Uh, Mike's going to say yes, because on his 95 TBI 350, the spacer made it feel faster. So that's enough. That's enough of a win right there. <laughs> Google loves OptiSpark. So if we put OptiSpark in, lots of things come up. I don't know throttle body stuff, but I always run a spacer with a carb. So you always do? Like you put a spacer on there no matter what combination it is? 106 people here and I'm the first like I've really am I way behind again man I am three 350 TBIs were not good Dan I actually want to do now it makes me want to do a test on them just to see where we can get to with the limitations of the fuel supply from the throttle body. And then also the limitations of the airflow supply of the throttle body um, to see what kind of power we can make. Because there's lots of TBI combinations out there. And I'd kind of like to see on the small block Chevy. Excuse me. The spacer claims to atomize the fuel better. See, I don't know how more distance helps with atomization. I would be curious to see how, in that actually working. And the third option needs to be, it depends. That's what it always is. Wow, we have um, we have a 50-50 poll here on throttle body spacers. Man, I think I'm not doing my job. I'm going to guess the throttle body spacer would add power, but changes where the power gain is made. So it's changing the power curve by having a spacer. Uh, I have to send you pictures of the Mercruiser tunnel ram I got from John Lingenfelter. The top has a dual blade throttle body on it. This was a long time ago before they came out. 
Throttle by spacers only work better if the engine is desired to make good power down low to mid-range. So you think that the throttle body spacer will add low speed power? I, one of the, interestingly enough, as a side note, I, one of the engines that I got from the wreck yard, one of the LS motors that I got, actually had a throttle body spacer on it. And it might have even been the one that has the, like, you know, corkscrew effect, <laughs> that has the slots in it. That are, they're, it's like spiral cut, like you do on a honey baked ham, <laughs> except the inside of the throttle body spacer. So I, 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 I need to do testing of those to see what, to see what's up. Uh, you should get a hold of some of the inexpensive uh, ASCAS AFR enforcer heads for the LS and see what kind of power they make compared to the CNC ported stuff. He, here, here's the problem with that statement. Not, not, I'm not picking on you because it's, there's nothing wrong with your statement. But here's the hard part about that is that to find out what the head does, like if we take that head and put it on a stock LS and it doesn't pick up any power, everyone's going to say that head's no good. It doesn't pick up any power when that's not the problem. <laughs> the problem is that head flows, I'm sure, a lot more than a factory LS1 head does. So to, to be able to take advantage of what that head has to offer, we have to have enough motors. We have to have a motor that's big enough, that has enough compression, that has enough camshaft, has enough intake manifold to be able to put, you know, to be able to utilize whatever that head can supply. Because that head can supply more than a stock one. I'm, I'm certain of it. I don't, I don't, I need to go back and look and see what the flow numbers are compared to a stock head. Um, or compared to like an AFR CNC head, I'm I'm assuming if if they did their marketing correctly that you'd have a stock head and then you'd have the fully CNC heads and then somewhere slotted in the middle, skewed to one side or the other, would be a NAS cast head. And for most applications, I'll bet you if that if that AS cast head flows well enough, that it probably takes care of a, of the, the vast majority of the people that would be putting these on stuff. Because not very many guys put a ported or even a CNC head on a combination. And they let's say that they have a CNC head that flows 320. Are there lots of guys putting that on a motor that actually makes like 640 or 650 or more? That's kind of hard to do. I would theorize that a spacer on a carb would help keep the fuel cooler. Maybe the power consistent in a worm engine may. So you're thinking it acts as an isolator then? What if the what if the carbon spacer is aluminum? Aluminum is not a good insulator. Aluminum actually is a really good conductor. So all the heat from the manifold and from the engine and from the engine bay, if it's closed, gets put into the carburetor, which is also either steel or aluminum, depending on which one you have. Isn't the idea of a throttle body spacer the same as deleting coolant lines running through the throttle body? I just went over that. Actually, it's that's not that's not what they're trying to do unless they make it out of some sort of uh, material that has an insulating property and, and aluminum is not a good choice for that. I feel like a throttle body spacer might help straighten the airflow and act like a slightly better air box while in the car. So you think it might help straighten the airflow into a manifold where then it has to make a whole bunch of turns. Um, that was the idea. Okay. The, when the guys were talking about like the tornadoes too, Oh, the tornado produces swirl. I'm like, okay. So the tornado that you're putting in your air intake swirls the air past the throttle body into the intake manifold continues to swirl and continues to create eight different swirls as it separates into all the different runners if you have a V8. I'm like, how is it doing? I want it to do that. I I want like eight individual tornadoes to be happening in the intake manifold. <laughs> and I want them to accordion too, because they're gonna work with the reflected waves. So I want them to stretch out and elongate and then compress and do all that. I want all that to be happening. I just don't really think that it does. <laughs> Uh, so tipsy, that's an, that's an interesting point, and we and I think that that might be the case 
on a so he said or she said i think it's he <laughs> richard has said that long runners i.e the father of the air and fuel has to travel and atomize makes more power so adding a throttle by spacer you'd basically be increasing the travel so if you're injecting the fuel into the top of the intake manifold a dual plane single plane whatever it is and then you have a spacer and you add to that so you've added more distance and and effectively more time to cool the charge air with the introduction of that fuel. So that sort of thing, I think, has potentially some merit. The thing is that adding a, a, a half inch spacer or one inch spacer, given the airspeed of the of the air and fuel mixture, I don't know how much extra time that actually is, um, but there is some. I mean, obviously we see that there's a difference between port injection and injecting the fuel at the top where the carburetor is. There's definitely a difference in that distance. But if we change it by that much, I don't know how much more that is. Uh, maybe it's some. And again, I, I'm not I'm not I'm not the guy that's saying that those are dumb and that they don't work because that's not the case. I'm saying do they work and I want to test them and and then if I if something happens yes or no, then then we got to try to figure out what's going on. My car feels faster after I clean out the floorboards and take a shower. <laughs> I feel sporty. Exactly. And after you clean the car, it just seems to run better, right? Because it likes getting the attention. I only put a spacer on a carb engine to make the air cleaner stick out of the hood. That's right. And then flip the lid over. I would think there might be an advantage for increase in PLEMS volume with a spacer. That's another interesting thing. Like on the carbureted stuff, when you're running single plane, where you're not changing the effective design of the intake manifold, because when you put an open spacer on a dual plane design, you're definitely changing the signal to the carburetor and, and you're changing a little bit the design of the intake manifold. When you're doing it to an open, uh, an open plenum single plane, all you're doing is adding plenum volume and perhaps changing the signal to the carburetor. <laughs> so I, I would like to see how all of that transpires. Uh, Turbo Monza Richard, small black Chevy, fully forged, 383, 6125, rod, trick flow, 215, hydraulic roller, LY6, or stage two sloppy cam. It says for 1,200 horsepower. Uh, I wouldn't. Are, are you asking whether you should do a 383 or a or a six liter? Um, I, I would do the LY6. I would do a six liter rather than a 383. Because if, if you do a 383 from a 5.3, you've already bored it out to the maximum. And I that's not the way that I would go. I would just do a six liter. Uh, Vern, on any motors, I don't run carbs right to the manifold. I run half inch or one inch spacers. Do you run open spacers or four hole spacers or tapered combos or reverse tapered combos? What, what do you do? Uh, Chuck, for a flat torque curve, which would be better? 236. I don't know what you mean by flat torque curve. Um, 236, 236, 237, 240. Um, I, I don't really understand what you mean by flat torque curve. I don't I don't understand why you'd want it to be flat and not have a, a curve. <laughs> um, or you want it to be longer or broader or, or you got to give me some more information. And of those cams, of those two cams, I would pick the 237, 240. Uh, yeah, we're yeah we're at forty nine yes and fifty one no, so it's really close at one hundred thirty seven votes. But we have one hundred ninety, we have two hundred people here now, so you guys better get to voting. You guys better be stepping up, stepping up to that poll. Adds runner length in essence, and it adds high speed power. Uh, a a spacer, a throttle body spacer, doesn't add any runner length. It just would change plenum volume.
<laughs> a super swirly one. It is. I was really excited when I saw it. I thought, oh man, I, this guy knows what's going on. This guy had this on his truck because he's going to swirl all that mo swirl all that air into his truck manifold and make super good torque. What if I put it on there and it improved the fuel mileage by like four miles per gallon? That'd be awesome. The GM TBI injector spacers were just as effective as the TB spacers. The now, well, no, that's not a spacer though. Okay, at least on the TBI, you have a wet intake and a spacer can actually work. Crazy question to ask, but how much power can an LS1 take with nitrous on forge rotating internals? A uh, big goal is for my Firebird. I, I know we've run 300 shots on junkyard motors, so if you have forge internals, you can do a lot more than that. Uh, Goodman boat transport, the 350 TBI would benefit from a spacer. So each side of the motor can draw from both bores in the throttle body. So you're trying to basically improve the airflow by allowing each side to draw from both rather than just having each one divided and, and only be able to breathe through one, one of those holes in the two hole throttle body deal. That's interesting. That, that probably could work. That's a good theory. I like that. turbo in a later <laughs> nice with the vortex technology i worded that wrong i meant there would be gains but i'm curious as which extreme of the power curve where it would make a difference uh oh with, like whether it adds down low or whether it adds up top or or at all i yeah i i don't i don't know which <laughs> i don't know i just don't know i would be surprised if a throttle body spacer behind a throttle body on an ls ever did anything I'd be real surprised if that even changed the power at all. But I want to test it. Uh, maybe it acts like a longer intake runner. What do I know? Just some kid who likes to learn engine stuff. Um, Trevor, at the, the spacers don't change the runner length because the runner ends into the common plenum, wherever that is. Whether, whether it's a dual plane or single plane, the runner ends there and then rarefication occurs and then we get reflective waves that go back and forth. So putting a spacer on the plenum to change the plenum doesn't change the runner length. The runner length is still starting and ending at the same spot. So it's not, that's not runner length. This is more plenum stuff. Uh, Patina Nation, I'm building a 91 Fox body LX notch. I have one of those. Nice. Mine's an 88 into a race wheat gasser. I have a 32 valve 4 cam 4.6. Okay. It's a four valve Cobra motor. How much boost can I give the stock block and intake? There's no limit to how much you can give the stock block. So you, you can't give it enough. The intake manifold, uh, if it's a Cobra intake manifold, then again, that's an aluminum one. So there's no limit there. So neither one of those are limiting how much boost you can run. Uh, the other things will be doing that. <laughs> I don't know if you have forged internals in it or, or ring gap or E85 or intercooling or all the other things that you need to make a lot of power with it, but you can make a lot of power with a 464 valve. Throttle body spacer will generally add power on a dual plane manifold whose divider is not slotted or relieved. So, but that's on a carbureted deal that you're talking about, right? Or are the TBIs also like that? The the TBI ones have two holes in them, right? They're, they're not a common opening. When changing valve size and heads, is there a noticeable difference in changing intake valve over exhaust or would it be a combination of the two? Do some heads have deficiencies in one valve or port? Y yes, they do. The Sometimes I like, I'm more concerned with improving the flow of the intake side but you need to look at what the flow is for both sides to see which one needs that on which head that you're talking about. And also, um, don't just look at going to a bigger valve. Also look at it unshrouding that valve in the chamber. If you put a bigger valve in it, if it's already shrouded with the stock valve and you put a bigger valve in it, you can actually make the situation worse. 
So you won't get the gains that you would get from going up to a bigger valve unless you unshroud the chamber. Plenum volume never hurts. And the Keglodon has entered the building. Uh, New King, I need to try the Arius LS Hemi head. I, yeah, I've seen those, but I've never, never run one. I don't think I've ever seen one in person, though. Uh, Karen, carbon spacers add power, but not throttle body spacers. The only throttle body spacer that adds power is the, <laughs> the NOS spacer, yeah. Uh, Richard, do you know if a 6.7 Cummings head will fit a 5.9 Bach? I don't have any idea. Big plums and yoga pants. Uh, Dan, so the, the, the 400s had came with four bolt mains on them, the four bolt blocks, the 400s did. Quick question, where can I find rocker arm pedestals for the TrickFlow 225 heads? I think you have to get those from TrickFlow. <laughs> it's really hairstyle like Ace Ventura. <laughs> well, all righty then. Casey, I'm going to use a Comp XE268 cam and a 383. It'll make good bottom end torque. It's going into a heavy off road. The 268 is not too bad in a 383. Uh, blind Guy Garage, real quick, what's the largest displacement LS based engine? I saw the 454 video. Now I want to know if there's anything bigger. Yeah, I have videos up of a, I did a 495. And you can go on the tall deck blocks, you can go over 500 inches, 515 or 520 inches. Mine had a four 500 stroke in it, I think. I think it was a four 500. I think guys are doing four 600s. Um, and I think, and, and they're going four 200 on the bore. I went four 185 on mine. Uh, four volt main 400s had three freeze plugs on each side. Nice. So while I'm out at the wrecking yards scoping all the 400 blocks that I find, um, I have to make sure that they have three, three freeze plugs, Mr. Freeze plugs. <laughs> Arc, wouldn't it just be better to grab seven to 15 horsepower from a windage tray? If yeah, you, a windage tray is really a good idea for small block forwards and small block Chevys and those kinds of things that don't have them. <laughs> so camera, this, that's a good point. I know spacers on the LS powered trucks can push the intake hose right into the fan shroud. That is true. That's pretty tight. I know that on mine. Do the front feed intake style of the LS to cylinder seven and eight starve for air compared to the others? Mm, no. TPI roller cam, Vortec heads, carbureted. <laughs> That's true, Dan. If you if you run them a quart and a half low on oil, it will make more power. How much power does a throttle body airfoil make on an L98 stock engine? On a stock one, maybe nothing. Um, but the airfoil does improve the flow of that throttle body. 
And more importantly, um, Myron from TPIS, he sold a million of those things. <laughs> Richard falls a lap behind. Am, am I am I lagging again? Come on, what's going on here? Uh, blind guy has two four bolt four hundred blocks with four bolt mains and one with two bolt mains for sale or trade for LS parts. I want to say someone made a six hundred cubic inch LS. I don't know how they would have done that. Uh, maybe the V twelve. A five three aluminum versus cast iron blocks. The if you do a five three, the they both can make the same power. One of them weighs a lot less, so you just pick the one that you want. Nova engines, yep, they're all Nova engines. I've not tested the first TPI stuff. <laughs> it does mean one, one million horsepower. Can you talk about third generation Firehawks and were they special cars? Uh, I did test the SLP intake manifold, if that counts. Uh, Charles, the current answer is 527 inches, so I wasn't too far off in my 520 which is the largest displacement achieved for this block anywhere in the world. So now I need to build one that's 528 inches, right? Just to, just to be one more. James, we're doing a six liter that has CP Carrillo rods and pistons, CNC six liter heads, good cam, but the compression ratio is 10.3 and got to be a turbo motor on 85 most of the time. Is the compression ratio too high for boost? No, you're fine. Have you ever run a turbo from one bank? Yes, I tried to do that on a big block and it didn't work very well, but I'm going to try to do it again. Will a 0.51 stock head gasket work on an LQ4 that has two thousands of pistons coming out of the bore? Yes. Yes, the deck was milled. And it's not uncommon for a factory piston to be out of the bore anyway from the factory. Um, even on a, a 53 thousandths gasket thickness, which is typical of the LS stuff. So even if you're out 10 thousandths, you, you still have um, 43 thousandths um, pissing the head, and that's enough. What are the torque numbers on a 525 cubic inch LS with all the goodies? I know mine was, mine was like 820 or something. And I have to go back and look. I can tell you what the torque number stuff was go back and search through all of my dyno stuff ls rec port head strokers and uh what i'm looking for is the big uh 46 no not the 468 that's a, also a good one but 468 500 cubic inch ls7 head test so let me find a good one not that one. Where's the next one? I think here's a masthead. So this thing made 810 or 811 horsepower and 726 foot pounds of torque. So it did it did pretty good. Uh, I have a 74 high nickel two bolt block. How much boost can I run? All of it. What's the max horsepower rating for my block? It's just all just whatever you put into it, it will be fine. Just do it and then come back and let us all know. I, I know we've done a thousand horsepower with them. I don't know how long they'll do that, but they will do that. Uh, Dan, multiply the um, cubic inches by 1.4 for a street engine for torque. Yeah, that's a pretty good street engine number. One of the guys in the other chats was telling me, uh, and I and I hope that I didn't dismiss him. I was just making fun of him a little bit, but you know, it's, it's all part of the deal. Um, he was saying that he had they when they did the um, the C5R stuff or C6R stuff, 
um, that they had 427s that were making 800 horsepower and 700 foot pounds. And 700 foot pounds from a 427 is a really big specific torque number. I think that that's 1.6 or something, right? Let's see, 700 divided by 427. Yeah, that's 1.639. That's a really good like specific torque number. Uh, Turbo Monza Richard the three three versus LY six was a small block Chevy versus LS question. Oh, okay. Um, and a Ford stock or small block Chevy bottom end versus a stock LS holding the twelve hundred horsepower better. Uh, I, I'd be more worried about the stock block on the Chevy. And I wouldn't be worried about the LY6 at 1,200 horsepower. Uh, I haven't ever run the first intake on the TPI stuff. Um, that wasn't included. I don't even know if it was available when I was running it. Maybe it was. Uh, do a 352. I actually want to do a 390 FE if that's the one that you're talking about. What do I need to do to make 600 horsepower out of a six liter LS2 aluminum block that's naturally aspirated? Do you have a cam? You you won't get 600 out of a six liter LS unless you do a lot of stuff to it. You have to change the intake manifold. You have to change the compression. You have to change the camshaft. You have to change the ported heads. You have to do a lot of stuff to make 100 horsepower per liter. It's a, NA. It's a lot. Dan, I've Sonic checked a lot of small blocks. Some get awfully thin at 60 thousandths or 60 over. I've seen thinner than 30 in some spots. D, that's that's not nearly thick enough. I'm going to go for induction and turbo on my old school small block Chevy here in the next couple of months. It will work just fine. We've run lots of turbo small block Chevys and they and they work good. Uh, Hemolt's residence. GM is controlling it on the 2023 Z06 Corvette. He figured it out 200 years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's organ pipe theory. Um, uh, Hemel's residence, yeah, has been around forever. If you take a look at an old school, and there and lots of factories have been doing um, variable um, variable plenum manifolds. It's been used a lot. Ford did it on their trucks way back on the two valve PI ones. They had a what is essentially a throttle body. They have a divider in there that separates the two sides of the plenum and then they open and close it at one specific RPM. It's actually fairly low. It was like a 2,500 or something. And it definitely changes the torque there. Uh, 1.6 is the number for race engines. Yeah, that, this one was right there. <laughs> How much boost can I? All of it, yes. And when you weld your plate over the wastegate, it needs to say that. It needs to say all of it. The coolest one was, um, um, Christian Ratto had, they had a little plate that, you know, cause when you, when you mount your wastegate to the wastegate flange, um, you use the little V-band clamp. Well, he had that, he made a little cap and it was a skull and crossbones. <laughs> they just put a cap over it and then flange that and then, you know, V-band that. And I thought, oh, if you're going to take the wastegate off altogether, you have to have something cool to go on there. And that was, that was totally awesome. Uh, what about the 8.1 liter Chevy, um, the big block LS that wrote about? It's not actually an LS, but it's a 496 big block Chevy. It's just a Gen 7 version, and there's not there's not a lot of aftermarket support for it, but I'd still like to run one. Uh, Brian, don't see a lot of people do shaft rockers and 716 studs on the top end for LS for RP, even though it's shown to help. Uh, you want to do a 716 stud on the top? Are you worried about stud deflection or something? Um, shaft rockers would be a good idea. Brian has some good stuff. Brian Tooley has some good um, Spintron data on that stuff. Uh, neighborhood, L3 board five over, BTR cam, flex fuel, diamond, dish piston, H-beam, ARP studded building for boost, but we'll be running NA until I get a supercharger, which are the ring gap B. Um, we like to run seven thousands per inch of bore. So you're going to be, you know, in the 28 or more range, 28 to 30. And it won't make any difference that you're running at NA. Uh, what turbo for a Goldwing Honda GL 1100? Um, I think a Pro Mod 88, probably I'm thinking, maybe two.
uh, did you see what uh, Torque LT made on the 8.1? I didn't see that. Uh, Richard, I have two four bolt, 400 blocks, uh, one four bolt, one two bolt. Do you want to do some trading on LS stuff? I don't know what I what I have to trade for that, and I don't know what I would do with a 400 block anyway. Actually, what I want is uh, um, I'm kind of leaning toward, and I don't need any more projects. Never mind. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, camera. I'm ready to buy a turbo on eBay. It says comes with no instructions. <laughs> nice. Do you know anybody that has instructions? I don't know what turbo you're talking about. I'm sure it goes under the hood near the exhaust. It, it's somewhere in that area. All you have to do is set it in your car or tell people online that you have a turbo and that's enough. Uh, Richard Suzuki Swift. It's not a Suzuki Swift turbo. It is a Sprint turbo. Come on, guys. And that's actually kind of small. I, I think you want to make more than 70 horsepower. Uh, 5.3 with 3.17 heads. You can do that. That's a lot of guys have done that. I got to put the, you know, big flowing, big chamber heads on because I'm going to run boost, right? No, you don't. Just leave the heads on that you have. But that will work. Uh, put a 327 crank in the 400. Yeah, you could do that. Why, why wouldn't you put a, um, a 302 crank in there? What else can would you recommend that makes good horsepower and not looking for a lot of torque? You just want all like all stuff on the big end. You got to tell me more about your combination. If you're looking for like lots of, if you want to kill all the torque, put a really short runner manifold in it and a really big head and lots of camshaft. You're going to have to make more piston to valve clearance. So you're going to have to notch your pistons and then you could have that stuff rev, be rev happy. Uh, a belt driven supercharger for a 5.3 swap C10. That works in a, in a truck. I would be more leaning toward a positive displacement deal, but it, you know, a, a centrifugal works too. Thomas uh, LT made 800 plus wheel torque with an 8.1. So it was, uh, um, it, it must have been boosted, right? Is that what we're talking about? Have to double up bearing spacers for the three inch crank and a 400. Yeah, the um, the journal size is going to be different unless you get a an actual 302 crank and not a 283 crank. Uh, if you get a DZ302 crank, then the bearing size, the journal size is the same, right? Isn't that correct? Or am I, or am I not knowing enough about 400 motors? Uh, 5.3 stock 862 heads boosting. What do they need? They don't need anything. You just need cam and springs and boost in a 5.3 with the heads that it came with, and you will be just fine. And um, take a look at the just, take a look at the test I did comparing all the stock heads. And then you won't be saying that about the 862 heads or the 706 heads. They're the same. Uh does anybody need a two-stroke? I have a DT125 I need to get rid of. So if anybody's interested in that bike, it's really nice. It's red, fancy. I thought the 302 GM was... Here, I'm, here I'm about to be told I'm, I'm wrong here. It's awesome. I love it. I thought the 302 GM was a 283 crank and a 350 block, but the 283 crank has a different um, has a different journal diameter. It's a small journal, right? Like the 327, and then the 350 stuff is a large journal. And I think that the 302, the DZ 302, is a large journal 283 crankshaft. I could be wrong, but I'm not. Uh, Richard might be able to get an 8.1 or a 60 by renting a U-Haul for two days. <laughs> Just have to drop in a running core for them. Nice. Uh, 
Uh, guys are making the, if somebody was asking about the, the five, three heads, guys are making way into the four digit power levels with, with stock heads. So you'll, you're fine. Uh, still needing an adapter for the 2.2, 2.5 on the dyno. No, I, ha I have that done. It's already done. It's ready to go, ready to rock and roll. So, Alice, the 67s were small journals and the 68 and 69s were large. Okay, that, see, that makes sense. And so I was, I was half wrong, probably more than that. And I put, um, as a matter of fact, when we did the, when we did the DZ302, I think I used a 283 crank and I think that we used bearing spacers or something for it when I did that. The DT125 is a 73 or 74, I think. I have an early 70s 454 board out to 468. Would I be able to boost it? Yes, you, you can. Um, or, or if that if that block has value or the motor has value because it came out of some number of matching cars, something like that, then yeah, you could just go get a, a rec one from the wrecking yard that you don't care about, and then you could boost that to the moon. Uh, Peter, I have a 400 small block with a 144 pancake blower on it, dark iron heads, four to six pounds, 830 quick fuel, double pumper, it's in an 89K5 blazer, had zero issues with it, nice. Did you see Kevin from KSR blow up soccer mom, and did you see the car in sick week running 650s in the quarter? I didn't, I haven't seen a lot of coverage on it. I've seen a couple of people post things about being in it, but... I have a DT400. I loved it. I really like this bike. It's nice. I just hardly ever ride it. Yeah, Daniel, guys used to make the, they call them 301s, but yeah, they used to make the 302s. They would just bore the 283s out. Uh, Racer, you ran D-stroke 283s? Nice. How, how small of a stroke did you run? I don't want to make the DT125 go fast. I don't really want to make it go fast. What I, what I want is a Honda Trail 90 or a Honda Spree or some, some sort of go-kart or like scooter that I can drive around. Oh, offset ground for a 2.9 stroke. Okay, cool. Bonfield has those goofy classes where oddball tiny engines make perfect sense that, well, they do like, for instance, a one liter Chevy Sprint turbo, which is just, you know, 17 different kinds of awesome. 301 Pontiac, yes. Jet box favorite. Uh, you made 500 on a non-stroked 5.3, but with bigger throttle body, injectors, CNC heads, and a high velocity. In What's a high velocity intake? But I need to stroke it to get more out of it. Um, it's really hard to make 500 horsepower from a 5.3. Uh, 
And it takes really good ported heads and a really good intake manifold and a really good camshaft to get that and, and headers and all kinds of stuff. Uh, did you test a dual plane with the EFI cam? I don't know what you mean by EFI cam. The XFI cam? <laughs> Corsair, LS1 rocker taking two and a quarter turns. That's too much. Um, you're... You're probably gonna have to go a hundred shorter than that. There are more votes than people. See, we like that. Well, what happened with our poll? Because I got to get going. Two hundred twenty-nine votes. Nice. And still, that's that's a good poll right there. We have forty-one or forty-nine percent yes and fifty-one percent no. So I guess. I guess it's certified. The answer is no, that the that the spacers will not, the throttle by spacers actually do not add power, seems to be seems to be the consensus. If you can count 49% and 51%, if you can count that actually as a consensus, which yeah, obviously we can't. Thank you guys for the poll, and we will end that officially. Boom. So you guys can see the results there. Have you seen a twin turbo Winnebago? <laughs> it's a burnout for the nice. That's awesome. We can put big motors in them. Blammo, can I run a K24 as a rear wheel drive for a BMW E46? I was thinking about throwing a big horsepower K24 after the M52 goes away um yeah i think people have um adapters for different transmissions for those right all the speed parks work on the iron duke spacers swirlers rudy two tutors Six seventy one in a motorhome. That's perfect. Okay, guys, it's time. It's officially time. I haven't started early, so yeah, it's like right at right at eight o'clock, eight o three. Nice. Um, thank you guys all for being here again. I hope you guys are taking a look at the video up on the Holly Stealth Ram and the dual plane and the different camshafts because you know you got to put different camshafts in there. Everyone loves seeing what they do and what they don't do. So I'm working on more stuff as always. Hopefully you know, getting ready to take a trip down to West Tech and see what I can get done down there. See what kind of damage I can do. <laughs> so they'll let me get into. Uh, thank you guys all for showing up and I will see you all tomorrow.